Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we are going to be talking about operant conditioning as it relates to psychiatry. So with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get started with conditioning. Just a quick recap. Conditioning is used in behavioral uh, psychology and in psychiatry, and it's a very well-known theory. But we're not going to talk about this definition. We're going to give you the DLDR version of the definition. The TLDR version is that conditioning is a process of linking a stimuli to a response. And that's very, very important to understand. And I'm going to put an asterisk right here so you guys don't forget that. It's going to keep coming back. There are two main types. You have operant conditioning and you have, sorry, you have classical conditioning and you have operant conditioning. And in this video, like we said, we're talking about operant conditioning specifically. So operant conditioning is designed to reinforce or decrease a certain type of behavior, which means it is designed to increase or decrease behavior, a certain type of behavior. And it's done through the process of conditioning, which remember the TLDR version of conditioning, it is the process of linking a stimulus to a response. So by linking a stimulus to a response, you can increase or decrease a certain type of behavior. One thing to remember about operant conditioning is that the, the response is going to be voluntary. In classical conditioning, the response was involuntary, but in operant conditioning, the response is voluntary, meaning you know what you are doing and what's happening. There are two subclasses of operant conditioning. You have reinforcement, which is used to increase the frequency of the desired behavior, and then you have punishment, which is used to decrease the frequency of the undesired behavior. And this is important to remember, and it gets a little confusing, I understand that, so I made a little memory tool for you guys. And the way I like to remember is that reinforcement is used to increase, and reinforcement and increase both have the word in in it, therefore they go together. And then punishment is used to decrease. I don't have something specific like that for punishment, but I like to think of intuitively where I used to get punished for doing something stupid, and that would cause me to decrease the amount of stupid things I would do. And therefore, that's how I remember punishment. Now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into that and we're gonna first start off by talking about reinforcement. As we mentioned earlier, reinforcement is used to increase the frequency of the desired behavior. Reinforcement, okay, and increase. Don't forget that memory tool. Now there are two main types of reinforcement. You have positive reinforcement in which you add something to increase the frequency of the, the desired behavior because we're talking about reinforcement so we're increasing. Okay, and then you have negative reinforcement in which you are subtracting something to increase the frequency of the desired behavior. The way I like to remember this is with a very simple memory tool and I think it's really high yield and I highly suggest you remember this because it's going to come back over and over again. And that is that positive reinforcement has the word positive in it and the positive sign which is a plus sign is also used in math for addition. Therefore positive reinforcement okay, means that you are adding something. And then negative reinforcement means that you are subtracting something because the minus sign for negative is equal to subtraction. That's how I remember it. Either way, in reinforcement, whether you're adding something or you are subtracting something, you are going to be increasing the frequency of a desired behavior. And that is because we are talking about reinforcement. So let's dive even a little bit more deeper into that and let's talk about positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement, like we said earlier, again and again, I'm gonna say it so you guys can remember it and it becomes passive learning. Positive reinforcement is adding something, remember the positive sign, uh, it's adding something to increase the frequency of the desired behavior. So don't forget the memory tools that we've talked about already. The example for this I have is that you can give money to a child for getting good grades. So that happened to me often. My parents would give me money every time I got good grades and that would reinforce the good grades and that would cause me to get more good grades. So in this example, the addition of money would cause an increase in the frequency of A's that I got, okay? And that would cause me to get more good grades. So that's a very simple positive uh, reinforcement example. When it comes to negative reinforcement, you are going to be subtracting something to increase the frequency of the desired behavior. Keep in mind, negative, negative means subtraction, okay? Um, don't forget the memory tool like we've already talked about. 
The example for this is taking away a child's Xbox One because they got bad grades. So the whole purpose of taking away the Xbox One is to increase the frequency of good grades. So therefore, the subtraction of the Xbox One would increase the frequency of A's. So my parents would take away my games and that would cause me to get better grades so I could get my game back. Punishment, on the other hand, is used to decrease the frequency of the undesired behavior. That's really important because remember, we talked about reinforcement is used to increase. Well, punishment is used to decrease a frequency of, a, of the desired, of the undesired behavior, excuse me. Now, there are also two main types of punishment, which is similar with uh, reinforcement. You have positive punishment. Again, you are adding something to decrease the frequency of the undesired behavior. And then you have negative reinforcement, which you are subtracting something to decrease the frequency of the undesired behavior. This stays true for both negative or positive punishment. You are going to be decreasing frequency. The positive punishment part or the negative punishment part, you're going to be either adding or subtracting. And remember the memory tool we've already talked about. The positive is equal to addition and negative is equal to subtraction. This will make it very easy for you to remember what's happening in each situation, uh, whether it's positive or negative. The punishment or, and the reinforcement memory tool will help you remember if you are increasing the frequency of desired behavior or if you are decreasing the frequency of an undesired behavior. All right, so let's talk about positive punishment. Positive punishment, like we said earlier, is the addition of something to decrease the frequency of the undesired behavior. Remember the memory tool, positive means add, okay, so you're adding something, and then punishment means to decrease the frequency. So the example in this I, that I have is that my parents used to beat the shit out of me in order to get me to uh, reduce the amount of bad grades I got, okay? So the addition of a beating, okay, would equal a decreased frequency in bad grades. So therefore, this is a example of positive punishment, okay? And I think I wrote that right here too in which a beating was addition of something new and then bad grades was an undesired behavior. If I got beat, I got, if I got beat for getting bad grades, that wouldn't make me get less bad grades so I would get beat less. Now, as far as negative punishment is concerned, negative punishment is subtracting something to decrease the frequency of the undesired behavior and the memory tool still stays true. Remember, negative means subtraction and punishment means to decrease frequency of the undesired behavior. And the example I have for this one is that a parent might take away a toy from two kids who are fighting over it. So what that means is that the removal of the toy is subtracting something from the equation, and that would cause uh, the kids to stop crying, okay? That means that by taking away a toy, which is a subtraction of something, you would decrease crying. And that's the, the frequency of the undesired behavior. Now, other things you should know about conditioning, whether it's classical or operant conditioning, there's something called extinction, where there's a gradual weakening of the conditioned response. And this is more uh, present in classical conditioning, where classical conditioning and uh, uh, the condition and the unconditioned responses are no longer linked. So if you stop ringing the bell for food for the dog, he will no longer associate the bell with food. It will just go away. But in operant condition, this can also happen when uh, behavior is no longer reinforced or punished, right? So if the kid is doing something bad, you don't punish them. If the kid is doing something good, you don't uh, reward them or reinforce it. That conditioning can go away. Habituation is a repeated exposure to a stimulation, stimuli can lead to a decreased response. So for example, if a kid goes to the hospital over and over again, he will be less scared of a doctor. Now the opposite of that is called sensitization. And that means that repeated exposure to a stimuli will lead to an increased response. So if a kid goes to the doctor over and over again, and he gets a shot every single time, he will become very terrified and very scared of the doctor because he knows he's gonna get poked every time he goes, and that will cause a heightened response, okay? Now, that concludes our session for operant conditioning. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And when you subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell button on the side so you guys can get notified every time we post a new video. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys back here real soon.